All right, so thank you everyone for coming out to this webinar. This is Speed Reading and Memorization Techniques. I'm your presenter. My name is Paul Novak. I'm the Founder and Program Director here at Iris Reading. And I want to get straight into it uh, and let's cover, well, discuss what we're going to cover in this particular webinar today. First of all, uh, we're going to measure your reading speed. Not everyone knows what it is. Some people feel like, well, I feel like I'm a fast reader, or some people will be like, I feel like I'm a slow reader. You'll find out exactly where you are and how that falls, whether you're average, above average, or below average. And of course, our goal today is going to be to help you make improvements in the session and also how to continue making improvements beyond the session. But it's not just going to be about speed. We'll also talk about how to read faster with comprehension how to read faster on the computer screen. A lot of you probably do quite a bit of reading on the screen. I do maybe, I think 80% of the reading that I'm doing is now on the computer screen. And we'll also discuss note taking because that's a part of reading. Uh, not always, you know, if you're reading just for pleasure, you might not be taking notes, but if you're reading, you know, you, you've got finals coming up, you might be taking notes because notes will help you to remember things. We'll talk about some ideal ways to take notes while you're reading and how to memorize information. So you've got all this stuff you have to memorize, maybe for finals, but how many times have you been taught how to memorize something? So, and actually I just noticed a typo on the slide there, my apologies, how memorize information, how horrible of us here, how to memorize information. So that is what we'll cover in this webinar today. A little bit about us, if you're not already familiar with us, Iris Reading, we are the uh, largest provider of speed reading and memorization workshops. We're based out of Chicago. We do the workshops online, of course, and in person as well. So if you ever want to invite us to your campus, if you like uh, today's presentation and you want to invite us on campus or to your uh, workplace, feel free to contact us. Uh, I'll have my contact information at the end of this webinar, but you could also go on our website, hit the contact button, and reach out to us that way. Now our focus is speed, of course, you want to read faster, it's comprehension, and it's retention. You want to remember what you read. So all three of these areas are equally important, right? We want to read faster, we want to comprehend, and we want to remember, but I want you to know that there's a subtle difference between comprehension, what you understand, and retention, which is what you remember. There's a difference between all of these. So comprehension is what you're understanding the moment you're actually reading it. So you have the book in front of you and you're just actively, you know, understanding that material. Now sometimes that's not happening. You ever read a whole page of text and you have you look up like I have no clue what I just read. Well, comprehension is one thing, but then retention is what do you remember later on? So sometimes you could have really really good comprehension, but the retention sometimes long term you might forget it. And that happens. Think about all the books you read maybe in high school. Uh, how much of those books do you remember? I remember when the book uh when The Great Gatsby, the movie, was coming out with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, I wanted to uh, watch the movie because I wanted to see how it compared to the book. I remember enjoying that book in high school. And I remember one of my friends asked me, so what is The Great Gatsby about? And I'm like, ooh, can't quite remember right now. <laughs> it just kind of slipped in my mind. The whole details of the plot, I could not remember exactly. And that's a good example of I probably had comprehension at the time, but my long-term retention was absolutely horrible. Now, I uh, want to give you a quick idea how I got involved teaching speed reading. Um, I learned speed reading during my freshman year of college from a professor that I had. And here's how this came about. For me, my freshman year, it started off uh, on the wrong foot. Uh, I mean, I, I was really excited to be in college, but I, I was struggling to keep up with all the material. Uh, for me, I was behind in just about every class except calculus, uh, because there was no reading to do in calculus. But I was meeting up with some of my professors and one of my professors uh, suggested to me that I take a speed reading course. He told me he took one when he was in college and it helped him out a lot. And I, I told him I was struggling to keep up in his class. And, you know, I, I just felt like there wasn't enough time in the day to get all this reading done. I was taking five classes in the semester. I also had a part-time job on the weekends. I was a commuter, commuter student. Uh, I was also on the basketball team, so that was like having another part-time job. So my day went from like 8 in the morning to 2 o'clock with classes and then practice, uh, basketball practice from 3 to 7, and then hit the library for a couple hours till like 10 or 11 o'clock. I'd be coming home sometimes almost at midnight, and this little by little started wearing me down. So I started searching around for a speed reading class, as this professor suggested to me, and the original course that he had taken was no longer around, so and I couldn't find any other courses in Chicago at the time. So I went back to my professor and I asked him if he could train me, if he could teach me what he knew about speed reading. And 
I remember he measures my reading speed, and we're going to measure yours in a few moments. I was at 190 words a minute, which I was told is around average. And I was actually relieved to know that I was an average reader because I always thought I was a below average reader. I thought I was kind of, kind of on the slow end as far as reading went. I always felt like I was more of a numbers guy. And so I was kind of relieved to know that I was average. But my professor told me, he's like, you shouldn't be happy with 190 words a minute. Um, that's average. But to keep up with all the college material that I assign and your other professors assign, you need to be closer to 400 words per minute or higher if you want to keep up. So we start training. He gives me a standardized reading test, you know, where you have like a passage to read and some questions to answer. I remember scoring a, a lousy 60% on this because I ran out of time. As usual, I always ran out of time on those kind of tests like the ACT, SAT. And so I started off 190 and 60%. My last session with him, after about maybe nine, ten hours of training, not in a single day, but like an hour, hour and a half, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'd come in during my professor's office hours. And after about ten hours of training, I went from 190 to 830. And 60% on the test the first time, 83% the second time. Now, I hate to say, sound cliche and call this a life-changing experience, but if you're reading you know, a little over four times faster, that changes a lot of things for you. For me, it was, well, now I'm going to start catching up with all my reading. I started keeping up with it. Uh, my freshman year, I pulled off a perfect GPA, although I didn't maintain a perfect GPA because, you know, college gets a little harder as you go through it. But this helped me out tremendously. During my sophomore year, actually, I had to, I had to start working a full-time job during my sophomore year. I didn't want to drop out of school, and I had to help my uh, parents out financially. So I kept going to school full-time, but at night. I'd schedule all my classes in the evening. And I found a job working at the Chicago Board of Trade on the trading floor. And I was a finance major, so I wanted to get some experience in the field of finance, and I found this internship. So I'd work from 8 to 4 during market hours. And from 4 to 6, I had some time to study because my cl class would be from 6 p.m. to 9.15 at night, Monday through Friday. Now, this was my schedule, you know, the entire week, a 40-hour week job plus a full-time schedule, if I was still reading at 190 words a minute, it would have been impossible to keep up with all of this. So um, the way I started teaching speed reading, when I'd get out of work, I'd go to you know class and I would be maybe reading in the stu student lounge. Every so often I'd have a friend or a classmate that would see me reading and they would ask me if, you, if, I was, uh, if I was skimming or if I was actually reading that fast. And I would tell them that I learned some speed reading techniques and I always got a follow-up question, how do you do it? So I give people little tips, and really it's about practice and doing certain exercises, and we're going to discuss that here. Um, but I get these questions every so often, and finally it's my senior year. I have to take one more elective, and one of the classes I chose was an entrepreneurship class. And it was my final semester in school, and we had to come up with a business idea, write a business plan, and execute that business plan. And for lack of any other better ideas, I decided I would start a little speed reading tutoring service on campus. And I started posting some flyers on campus, and I would get emails from students that were interested in learning to read faster. And I would teach them on weekends, because I already had a full-time job, so I'd teach them on weekends. And one of the things I found was I just really loved teaching. I couldn't see myself as like a high school teacher or a professor, but I just enjoyed sharing information. So I kept doing this. When I graduated, this was kind of a thing I did on the side. I had a full-time job in finance. I kept working in finance. But little by little, Iris started to grow, and we've done these now these classes in over 40 cities across the U.S. We've done them for students at Harvard, employees at NASA, Google, LinkedIn. The reason why I'm mentioning this is reading underlies so much of what we do. And if we can get more efficient at it, it will change a lot of things in your life. It'll save you a lot of time. You'll get better grades. You'll have, a, you'll have an edge in your career. So I want to get right into it. As we mentioned, we're going to cover speed, comprehension, and retention. Let's start because I know this is a speed reading techniques webinar, but when I think of reading, I always think of comprehension and retention. And actually, our organization, we focus probably 60% on the comprehension and retention and 40% on speed. Now, why don't we focus more on speed? Because speed means nothing if you're not understanding it, right? So I want to start with how to memorize information. And we're going to discuss a very specific technique called the memory palace technique. Now, some of you may have heard of this, and if you haven't, we're going to go over it. And even if you've heard of this technique, I'm going to cover it in detail so you understand exactly how it works and how you can apply this. I know some of you have finals coming up. How you can apply this to memorize things for finals. Now, this technique dates back to the ancient Greeks. It's a few thousand years old. And think about it. Ancient Greece, back then, you didn't have, you know, 
the availability of hard drives to store information, right? You didn't have even, you know, even paper and pens weren't, you couldn't really store information as you could today. So it was very important to learn how to memorize and retrieve information from uh, the original uh, hard drive up here. So memory palace technique, how's it work? You gotta choose a location you're familiar with. This can be maybe your home, uh, this could be your office, it could be your campus, and let's let's say you pick your home, and actually you should start with your home or wherever you're living currently as a memory palace to begin with because you're most familiar with that location. So once you pick your location, you have to choose an order of sublocations. What I mean by that is what's the first thing you encounter uh, when you come back from school or from work? Maybe it's the garage, maybe it's the front door, maybe it's the mailbox. Uh, what, and then what's the second thing you encounter? So this is basically a mental walkthrough of your home. So here's an example. This is actually an example of uh, my memory palace. Uh, mailbox is one for me, front door is two, then there's the stairway leading to the living room, then the hallway, the bathroom, the kitchen, the bedroom, so on and so forth. Now, how many things you have in your memory palace, uh, how many locations, is kind of dependent on how much you need to remember. But let's say you have these eight or more things figured out. Then you have to associate whatever topic of information you need to memorize needs to be associated to the mailbox, if it's the first thing you need to memorize. The second thing would be associated to your front door. Now, I'm saying second thing, front door. Number two for you is going to be totally different. You know, if you live in a... I mean, this is not a picture of my home. This is just some stock photograph. But, you know, if you live in a condo building, let's say, your number one might be, you know, the lobby of that building. Your number two might be, I don't know, maybe the uh, elevator that goes up to the floor that you live on. So... Let's say your topic was something related with technology. I don't know, let's say you've got a book or a chapter you're reading about technology, your memory palace is the home, and you've got, let's say, these first five uh, locations. And you have to remember Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, Netflix. Maybe you have to remember them in that order. Now, the way this would work is you need to come up with an association with Apple and Mailbox. Now, why an association? Because it turns out your brain remembers information more easily this way. Now, the other thing you need to remember is that you'll remember things that are weird. Anything that's a little out of the ordinary or exaggerated is easier to remember. For example, you know, when you see commercials, uh, you'll notice that the advertisers will usually go out of their way to make a commercial just ridiculous or funny, right? That's done on purpose because it's more memorable. So if we had to remember that Apple was our first thing to remember, and let's say number one in our memory palace is mailbox, uh, you can picture the fruit, the phones, or a MacBook, anything Apple related, even though I know the fruit is not related to the tech company, but I, w I might picture my mail mailbox uh, flooded with apples. I open it up and like 15 apples just fall out of there. That would be weird. Now, even though it's weird, we're doing this on purpose because we remember things that are weird or unique or strange. So number two is Amazon. Well, you might picture the, the, the actual Amazon or an Am a box from Amazon. I would picture a giant box on my front door from Amazon. If three was the stairway, you have to picture something related to Facebook. You might picture uh, Mark Zuckerberg sitting on your stairway checking his Facebook, which is very uh, would be kind of strange, right? That's very meta. Mark Zuckerberg checking his Facebook. And then we move on to four, and let's say four was your living room and you had to remember Twitter. I would picture my living room filled with blue birds flying around everywhere to remind me of Twitter. If five was my hallway, I might picture a flat screen TV just sitting in the middle of the hallway, which is, again, weird because usually that's in my living room. But I would picture it in my hallway, and you want to be vivid with these images. You want to actually picture um, detail. So I would actually picture maybe a certain show, maybe House of Cards playing on the screen. Now, the reason why the memory palace technique is so effective is you could also use it to remember subcategories of information. So, let's say not only did you have to remember Amazon, but you had to remember these three details about Amazon. Now, the way this works is you need to find three sub areas of your front door. Why? Because front door is going to be related with Amazon, and we these three subtopics need to be pictured in three parts of your door. So I'm sure your door has three areas. You know, there, you could picture one area. For me, there's like this little window at the top of the front door. 
Uh, there's also the doorknob, and then there's the doormat. So maybe I would put one thing in each spot if I had to remember these three subtopics. So that's how you can deal with uh, subcategories of information using the memory palace. It's very, very effective, and here, here's why it's extremely effective. You can have multiple memory palaces. You don't have to just use the one place where you live, because let's say you've got a history final coming up. Well, you can use your home, maybe, for history. Maybe you use your, you use your office for uh, the chemistry class. Maybe you use the college campus or your friend's place or your parent's place. There's all these different options for memory palaces, and these are all locations you're familiar with, so you just need to come up with a mental walkthrough, and then you put whatever you need to remember in various places in the memory palace. And uh, this, this particular technique has been very, very effective. As I mentioned, it was, uh, it's popularly known as the memory palace technique, but it's also known as the method of loci or loci, and that word is derived from, it's associated with the word location. So why is this important? The way you remember things, uh, locational information, you can remember very specific places. It's, it's like a mental filing cabinet in your mind. And it's been used by the ancient Greeks years ago. It's unfortunate it's not used as commonly right now, but if you have stuff to memorize for finals, I highly suggest you take advantage of the memory palace technique. It will really, really help you to figure out, okay, I've got to memorize maybe 12 things for this class. I've got to remember 15 things for that class. We, we've trained uh, students in law school and students preparing for the bar exam uh, doctors, people that have to remember very, very specific detailed information, we've trained them using how to optimize their memory palaces, and it's a great way to memorize lots and lots of information. Now, note-taking also helps you remember. Everybody knows that, but uh, there are bad ways to take notes, right? <laughs> like, when, when should I take notes? Well, um, you ever see a page that looks like this where you just have ridiculous amounts of highlighting? If you ever bought a used college textbook, you know what I'm talking about here. Um, and sometimes there's more than one color on the page. Uh, obviously, if you highlight this much, you're kind of uh, diluting the importance of what you're highlighting, right? If everything's important, then nothing is important. So when should you take notes? What I suggest is don't take any notes until you finish a paragraph. Here's why. Most people, here's what happened. They, they're reading, and maybe they got a final coming up, and they're like, ooh, that's important. It could be on the final. I'm going to highlight that. And then they read the next sentence, and they're like, ooh, that's kind of important too. I'm going to highlight that as well. And then they read the third sentence, and it turns out this one's way more important than the previous two. And they'll, this time they might be like, you know what, I'll use a different color. Uh, you see where this is going. If you get caught up in details, you lose sight of the big picture. You ever hear that, that phrase? And this is one of the common problems when it comes to excessive note-taking. So I would suggest wait until you finish a paragraph at the very least, or maybe only take notes when you finish a section. That's much better than doing this. And actually, a good time frame, 80% of your time should be spent moving through your chapter, reading through the material. You don't want to spend more than 20% of your time on note-taking. So that 20% would amount to, if you were studying for one hour, 20% of the time is basically no more than 12 minutes of a one-hour study session should be spent taking notes. You want to make progress. I know some students that will spend half of their time reading and the other half taking notes, and that's probably much more note-taking than you want to spend. Also, how should I take notes? Well, you ever uh, you ever look at your notes and find them totally useless? <laughs> or they look like this, and you're like, I don't even know how to read this, where to start. Um, well, you might want to consider organizing your notes a little differently with some structure, such as a mind map. Uh, mind maps can be a great way of visualizing information. And you remember visual information a little more easily, even though this is basically, uh, you know, it's text, but it's laid out visually. And the reason why they call it a mind map Mind maps reflect the way your mind works much better than notes that look like this. This doesn't really, this is just kind of all over the place. Now, I mean, you might have some notes like this, and if you have a process and a strategy for it, that's fine. But mind mapping is a good way to kind of get the bird's eye view. Remember we said when you get caught up in details, you lose sight of the big picture? This keeps the big picture in mind. You have your central idea. So this might be your title of the chapter. This might be the first section. This might be the second section, or this might be takeaway number one, takeaway number two, and so on and so forth. But when you're done, it gives you a nice bird's eye view. You see the forest, and then you could zero in on the trees. Uh, and of course, mind maps can be created, you know, just 
pen and paper, or you can create mind maps online. I'd suggest this tool right here, xmind.net. It's a free mind mapping tool. And, and actually, there's there are dozens of mind mapping tools out there. Uh, I've used quite a few of them. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite ones. Uh, this works on the web. It also works as a download for Mac or a PC. So check it out. It's free. They have a premium version, but I've never had any, I've been using this for years, and I've never had any use for the premium version because the free version is so robust. So it's not like a timed trial, you know, it's not a 30-day trial. This is a free mind mapping tool that you can use uh, starting today if you like creating your notes in this kind of a visual fashion. So that's xmind.net. Now, let's cover how fast you currently read because uh, most people don't know. A lot of people know their typing speed, but they don't know their reading speed. Let's find out right now. And here's how we're going to do this. I've got a little timer here in my hand. And I'm going to put one minute on the clock, and you are going to read... When I move to the next slide, I'm going to show it to you really quick because there's an article on the next slide. You're going to be reading this article right here. Now, I don't want you to start reading it yet because I want to just explain what we're going to do here. You're going to read for one single minute. And during that minute, I want you to read the way you normally would. Don't go faster than usual. Don't go slower than usual. Go at your regular reading speed. And while you're reading, you'll see a bunch of numbers on the side of the page. Those numbers just correspond to how many words are up to that point. So you can ignore the numbers, obviously, while you're reading. And, you know, this is medium-level material. It's not too easy, and it's not, you know, it's not advanced-level physics, and it's also not, you know, a children's book. So read the way you normally would so we can get an accurate idea of how fast you're reading. And I'm going to uh, get rid of my webcam for the moment. And when we start when I start reading, when I ask you to start reading, I'm going to silence my microphone, so um, I'm not distracting you with any noise from here. So you should be able to, you should, should be ready to read right now. Ready? Go ahead and begin. Okay, stop. All right, go ahead and look at the line where you stopped. And I'm going to pull the, mic, the webcam back up. Hello again. And uh, make sure you take note of your reading speed. And here's why. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next slide in a moment here. So make sure you write that number down somewhere. Because we'll measure your reading speed again later on to kind of compare the two. But make sure you write that down, whether it's on a sheet of paper on the side or, you know, open up a text documents or a notepad or Word and just keep track of that number. By the way, if you ended, let's say, because, uh, you know, 193, this right here corresponds to the last word on that line. If you ended somewhere over here, and let's say you didn't read those last three words, well, you would just subtract three, so you'd be at 190. So uh, go ahead and take note of your speed. And if you're wondering what the average is, well, this is the average, 150 to 250. Now, I want to take a quick little poll because uh, we have that abil uh, ability here. Uh, you're going to see on your screen in a moment here, I'm launching a poll, and all it says is, uh, how fast did you read? Go ahead and select how fast you read. I'll give you guys a few moments. Make sure you do it right now because I'm going to take this away, and you won't be able to vote in a few moments. I see so far 60, 70% of the people have voted. We're now at... 80%, okay, a few more haven't voted. Go ahead and write, go ahead and select how fast you read. All right, most of us have voted, so I'm going to close the poll, and let's broadcast the results so everyone can see here. So most people landed, as you can see, 200 to 299. Some of you 100 to 199, and some of you were above average at 300 to 399. So 
Where, where did more than 80% land? Somewhere in this range, 100 to 300. Now, this is interesting. You see how most people were 200 to 300? Let me go back to the slides. I said the average is 150 to 250. Well, one, we've got a pretty smart group here. Two, um, this is the average for adults in the U.S. For college students, it's more like 200 to 300. So the, hang on one second, got to hide the results. And let me just ask you guys to make sure, can you see my uh, screen right now, the slide that says average reading speed? Type a yes if you could see that. Okay, very good. So you saw in the poll that most of you here, and, and we, by the way, we had hundreds of people register for this webinar. We've got a lot of attendees here. Uh, most of you are 200 to 300. So that's pretty much the average for college students. This is the average for adults in the U.S., and that, that doesn't discriminate between whether their education levels and things like that. That is basically just the average for just, just about everybody. But when you take college educated, it's 200 to 300. And if you were above 300, you're definitely an above average reader. And it doesn't mean you can't keep making improvements. You can, and we'll work on that. And for those of you, if, you're, if you fell below average, don't worry, you can still make improvements. Everybody can make improvements because that's the way we get better at anything is through practice and we're going to talk about how to do that. So, easiest way to start reading faster right now is to use your hand as a guide. This is a very simple technique. You just use your hand, your finger or your hand. Uh, you could even use a pen and you're just going from left to right line by line. Let me explain why it's important to use your hand as a guide because your eyes are naturally attracted to motion. Uh, think about it this way. If there was a bee flying around in your room, or my room, uh, it would be a little distracting, right? If a bee was flying around, well, why? Be one, because it's a bee, and two, because anything that moves around would just naturally get our attention, right? So your eyes are attracted to motion. That's why using your hand helps you concentrate. If you have trouble uh, with your focus while you're studying, Putting your hand on the page and reading, that will instantly improve your focus. Now, it's not going to ensure that you have perfect focus, but it will definitely help. And that's one way you can start boosting your speed. Now, this alone is not going to double or triple your speed, but it will give you, you know, some sort of an improvement. And that's, that's a good thing, but it's more useful, obviously, to use your hand on something that's, you know, printed material like an actual textbook. Uh, but what if you're reading online, right? It's not as practical to use your hand as a guide when you're reading online. Actually, reading on the computer screen can be sometimes a little frustrating. And I want to go over how you can do it a little more efficiently. And there is a free speed reading tool. It's an application that we developed here at IRIS. And it helps you read faster on the screen. I want to show you how it works because it's actually very, very very interesting, and I think you'll find it interesting as well. So let's take some reading material that uh, from The Onion, very technical information. So we've got this article here, World Scientists Admit They Just Don't Like Mice. All right, so we're going to read this using the application that I was talking about. Here's how the application works. You basically have to just copy the text that you want to read, and after you copy it, you go to this application called Accelerator, and you paste the text in there. So then you click begin and you'll notice in the middle here these are the first two words from the article nearly 700 that's from right over here nearly 700 as you can see. So what we're going to do is you're going to focus your attention in the middle here when I click the read button you will notice the words are going to be blinking right in the middle at the speed that we set. Now the application is set by default for 300 words per minute. Now, we can change that in the settings if we wanted to, and we'll explore the settings in a moment. But right now, I want you to focus in the middle of the screen and see if you can keep up at 300 words a minute. How does that compare to the average reader? Remember I said the average is like 150 to 250? Guess what? The average person reads on the screen a little slower than they would on the page. If you're wondering how much slower, uh, one study I saw, I think it was published maybe like six, seven years ago, they were taking adults in the U.S. and they were reading off of desktop computer screens, and they were reading on average around 32% slower, I believe. Um, so that means the average reading speed on the screen is more around 150 than 200. So if you're able to keep up at 300, that's double the normal rate. So pay attention here. 
I'm going to click read, and we'll just read a few paragraphs from this article. And actually, so I don't distract you, I'll uh, hide my webcam for the moment, and I will also turn off my microphone. So focus your attention in the middle here. We're going to go ahead and get going. Here we go. Okay, I think you get the idea, right? As <laughs> you probably noticed, um, you probably noticed the words were blinking on the screen two at a time, right? And so you can read groups of words. Most people just go one at a time. Uh, you can change that in the settings. You could decide to go one at a time, two at a time. Uh, by the way, I, I just got a message here from one of you. Uh, Ethan says the video was a little bit choppy. Uh, could be because you know we're streaming this right now live, and maybe my internet connection or your internet connection may have uh, skipped a beat. Um, when you do this on your own, it will it will play at a constant pace. It'll go at that speed. Uh, so I just wanted to demonstrate. Thanks for letting me know that the uh, the text was a little bit choppy. Um, so the other thing is there are a variety of settings that you can change here. So if we go to settings, you can change the words per minute, the chunk size, how many words you want to see at a time. There are some cosmetic things like font color, font size, things like that. Um, there's a lot of other interesting settings here like speed variability where it will slow down and speed up. That can actually help you with reading larger chunks of text. There's also a slight pause at the end of sentences and paragraphs you can do. Uh, this right here, start new chunk at the end of sentences and paragraphs, this will ensure that when you get to the end of a sentence, let's say, uh, by the way, I'm just moving through with my keyboard right now. If you get to the end of a sentence and there's just one word, it'll just show you that last word. You see right there, the word crawl. And then when you get to the next sentence, it'll go back to two at a time. Or you can change this to three at a time. Or I, I would suggest doing at least two or three words to begin with, and then you can go from there. So you can explore some of the other settings on your own. This is a great tool for reading faster on the computer screen, and it's accelerator.com. It's a free application that we developed here at Iris. We are working on an Android version and an iPhone version as well. We'll keep you posted about that when it's ready. Now, I mentioned that using your hand as a guide is helpful, and that's if you're reading on the page, because you can pace yourself. With this, you pace yourself through the application. But let's talk about some other ways we can improve, because most people, the way that they read is something like this. If this was a, you see this little green dot bouncing around from word to word? This is how most people tend to read, just one by one. And of course, every so often they do one of these where they're like, wait, hold on one second, let me back up. Ah, uh, yes, there we go. So most people will read one by one. I'm turning my webcam back on, hello again. There are some old reading habits we have to change if we're going to start reading faster. One of them is this habit of fixation. You know, fixation is just that habit of going word by word. You can read groups of words, but it's an old reading habit that most people go one by one. If you could start reading groups of words, you'll be able to speed up. And actually, that accelerator application that I just showed you, that will actually help you and train you to read groups of words. Now, fixation is just one of the old reading habits. There are a number of them. Uh, there's also something called regression. and That's something we're all familiar with. <laughs> you know, We read a page of text and we're like, I have no clue what I just read. i got to read this again. Or your mind just starts wandering off thinking of other things while you're reading. You're like, wait, hold on. i got to back up and reread this. So improving our concentration is key so we can limit this, the amount of time we go back to reread. There's a third old reading habit, and this is the hardest one to change. Remember when you were first learning how to read, your teacher had you get up in front of class and you had to read out loud. You remember this dreadful experience? Uh, I, I say dreadful because I used to hate reading out loud in class because uh, English is not my first language, it's Polish. Uh, both of my parents are immigrants from Poland. Uh, I was born in Chicago, but at the time, I didn't speak any English. <laughs> I grew up speaking Polish. And I started learning English when I was like five or six. So I hated reading out loud because I always messed up on words. 
And the good news is you don't have to read out loud forever, right? Eventually your teacher tells you to do what? Say the words, not out loud, but in your head. Say the words silently to yourself. And this is known as subvocalization. Subvocalization is that voice you hear in your head while you're reading. So have you noticed that, that you hear voices in your head? Yes. Uh, and it doesn't mean you're crazy. Uh, it's your voice, after all. By the way, if it's another voice, you might be in the wrong session today. But this is normal to say words in your head. Everybody does it, but there's a problem with it. Do you have to say the word to understand what it means? Eh, not necessarily. For example, when you're driving and you see a stop sign, do you say stop? Probably not. You see it and you just understand it. Same thing when you're if you walk by a Starbucks, it might it, it'll say Starbucks Coffee, the full name of the company. You don't look at that and actually say in your head Starbucks Coffee. It just kind of registers, right? Now I know there's visuals that accompany these words, but you don't necessarily have to say a word to understand what it means. And this actually slows us down. Subvocalization is a habit that, if you think about it, if you're saying every single word in your head, doesn't that mean that you're only going to read as fast as you talk? And there is a limit to how fast you can talk. By the way, what is the average talking speed? Guess what? The average talking speed is exactly the same as the average reading speed. It's 150 to 250. Now, why is it the same? It's because of this habit right here. Subvocalization is the reason why people read as fast as they talk. But you're capable of going faster than that. You can read, think of your thinking speed. You can think a lot faster than you can pronounce words. And that's why this habit has to change. Now, the way we're going to change these habits, and how, you know, how do you get better at anything you have to practice, right? So we're talking about practice here. And how exactly do we go about conducting practice when it comes to reading? Well, I'm going to give you one example. There are these speed drills that you can practice. And let me explain how they work. Very simple. You just have to purposely go faster than you would normally read. Now, we're actually going to practice a simple speed drill right now. Remember uh, that article I showed you earlier where you read for a minute? Remember I told you to keep track of where you stopped? What I want you to do is you're going to do a speed drill. You're going to start back at the beginning of this article, which you already read, and you're going to go through the same information that you read in 60 seconds. You're going to do it in 40 seconds. I want you to purposely go through that information faster than you would normally read it. Now, it shouldn't be that hard, right, because you already read this article for the first minute. So you're just basically rereading what you already read, but you're going faster. You're going to get through it. I want you to get through it in 40 seconds. Force your eyes to go at a faster pace. And let's try this out just so you can get a taste and an idea of how these, how these drills work. I'm going to turn off my webcam again. And when we start the drill, I will silence my microphone. But you've got 40 seconds. So let's say you read initially the first two paragraphs. So you were 250 words a minute. You have to get to that same place in 40 seconds. Are you ready? Set and go. And stop. Okay, so that was 40 seconds. We're going to do another drill now that's 30 seconds. Same thing. Now, these speed drills, the purpose is to just see words at a faster pace than you would normally read them. So now I want you to get through that same information that you previously read in half the time. You've got 30 seconds to get through all of that material you previously read. So, um, again, this was from the minute of reading we did earlier in the webinar. You've got to get through all that material in 30 seconds. Let's try it again. A little faster. Ready, set, and go.
And stop. Okay, how'd you do there? Hopefully you made it through the minute of reading you did. That was 30 seconds. I wanted you to purposely go faster. And now what you have on the screen here is an extended version of that article. So this is actually all 581 words of that article. Now I'm going to give you a minute. This is still a speed drill. I don't want you to think of this as regular reading. You're not going to read at a slow speed or a medium speed. I want you to purposely go at a fast speed, even if that means you're going to be losing some comprehension along the way. Now, you're going to get some comprehension from the fact that you already read this beginning part, right? You read the beginning, the first minute of this article. Now, I want you to spend a minute and try to get all the way through to the final word. All 581, I'm basically asking you to go 581 words per minute right now. So, expect that your comprehension is not going to be that great. Um, that's okay. The goal of the, drill, the speed drill is to see words at a much more rapid pace than you're normally used to. So let's try it out one more time. I'm putting a minute on the clock. Get through that entire article. Ready, set, and go. Okay, stop, and that was one, a one-minute speed drill. Okay, now what we're going to do is you're going to go back to normal reading. So I've got a new article that's going to be on the screen here. You're going to read for good comprehension. I'm going to put a minute on the clock, but this time you're not, we're not doing a speed drill, so you don't have to purposely go way faster than you would normally read. I want you to go at whatever speed feels comfortable, okay, for so you can understand the material. That means don't go too slow, and of course don't go too fast either, okay? Are you ready? Set and go. Okay, stop. That was one minute of reading. Look at the line where you stopped. Make sure you take note of your speed there. Make sure you take note because I'm going to pull up a poll and I want to ask you if you made an improvement. So uh, you're going to see, make sure you take note of your speed here. And I want to know, did you read faster this time around? Go ahead and uh, vote in the poll. We just put it up on the screen. You should see it shortly. And I see a lot of you are voting already. Okay. I'll give you a few more moments. I see 70% of the people have voted. We're approaching 80%. We're almost at 100. Did you read a little faster here? Yes or no? Okay. I am going to close the poll. And let me share the results with you here. So 91% of you made an improvement. Very good. Now, we only did three drills. So, you know, some of you didn't make an improvement. That's okay. We only did three of these drills. But I want you to understand how, how these drills work. Um, and by the way, we, we don't always see 100% of the people making an improvement after just three drills. When we do our longer classes, whether it's in person or 
more comprehensive online courses. Um, we do a lot of these kinds of drills. And that ensures that people make gradual improvements over time. So let me explain how these drills work. Um, and I know we're running just a bit over on the time here. We have just a few more minutes left. I want to explain how you can continue making more improvements. So stick around. Um, if you made an improvement, very good. That's You deserve the success baby right here. Um, good job. But how do these drills work? I like to compare them to driving a car on the highway. You know, when you're on the highway, you might be going 70 miles an hour. And how does it feel when you get off the highway? Doesn't it feel kind of slow? Now, why does it feel slow? Because you got used to going 70 miles an hour. Sometimes you get off the highway, you're still going 40 or 50, and you don't even realize it because you got used to going 70. Think of your reading speed the same way. When we do the speed drills, it's kind of like being on the uh, highway, so to speak. And then we get off the highway, and we go back to normal reading, and we readjust. And the normal reading, even though we're going faster than usual, won't feel as fast. And there are a variety of other things you can do to couple this. Um, these drills, I mentioned that we do a lot of these drills in our classes. This is just one type of many speed reading drills that are out there. Um, your goal in this particular speed drill is to go at a pace of maybe double your normal speed. So one example exercise might be you read for 20 minutes, and then you spend 10 minutes skimming through the material that you just read. So why 10 minutes? Because you're trying to go at double your normal speed. So you read for 20, and then whatever you read during that 20 minutes, maybe you not maybe, but this is one way that you can practice this drill. You get through 10 minutes, the 20 minutes of reading you previously did. Even though you're essentially skimming material you already read, you're training your eyes to see words at a faster rate. And the way these drills work, if you're an average reader at 200, you should be practicing at 400. So you can get to something like 250. And if you're reading at 250 with comprehension, you should practice at 500. So you can get, eventually, 300 is not going to feel so fast. If you're at 300, you practice at 600. And this is a step-by-step -step approach to boosting your speed. Now, if you want to continue making more improvements, this is the best way to follow up this class. Our Speed Reading Mastery course, it's uh, basically webinars that are just like this one. There are 10 of them in this particular course. And they basically continue building from this webinar into what is known as our mastery course. It's our most popular online course. And if you go to irisreading.com slash mastery, we actually set up a special page for people in attendance at this webinar. Um, let me explain what these 10 webinars are. All of them are anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes in length. And there are exercises that you conduct during these webinars so you can start making improvements. One of the webinars, the first video in the series, is how to read groups of words. Now these are video tutorials. You can watch them at any point that you want. Um, you could watch them in part, you could watch them all in one day or you could you could binge watch them or you could watch them over a period of time. Um, reading groups of words, very important to boosting your speed. Also, remember we talked about that voice in your head while you're reading? There's a video in this course on how to reduce subvocalization so you can start reading faster, as fast as you think. There's also another video in this uh, series, Remembering More Through Spaced Learning. This is a concept that improves your memory. There's a fourth webinar called Essential Eye Training to Boost Your Speed. There's also uh, Learning to Read and Remember Visually. So if you like that memory palace technique, there are a variety of memory techniques, and they're covered in this fifth webinar. A lot of people love this because it trains you how to memorize information, which can be very helpful for finals. And by the way, you can take these videos and it's kind of a recommended order, but you can kind of take them in whatever order you like. The sixth webinar in this series is how to sharpen your focus for increased speed. So if you have trouble with concentration, this is a great webinar for you. And there's high-speed comprehension strategies. So if you start going at five, six, seven, eight hundred words a minute, how do you maintain comprehension at that kind of a faster rate? Uh, also, if you want to keep up with the news, the eighth webinar in this series is the most efficient way to speed read the news. There's advanced level speed reading exercises. And there's, this is probably our most popular video in the series, how to read a book in one day. People love this one. So if you want to check out the Speed Reading Mastery course, you go to irisreading.com slash mastery. When we launched this originally, each webinar was $25 each. Um, we actually have a special for people in this webinar. Uh, the package price is $50 for the entire course. And we're doing this because, uh, one, we know some people are in finals week and they need to keep up and they need to catch up maybe with their reading. And also, you know a little bit of the basics. Actually, we went a little beyond the basics here. This is the ideal way to follow up today's webinar. And also, because we cover memorization techniques, there's also a bonus PDF in that series on how to remember names effectively. So go to irisreading.com slash mastery if you want to take advantage of that. What we covered today was you know, how fast you currently read. Hopefully, you know where you're starting, so you can continue building upon that. How to read faster with comprehension. 
how to read faster on the computer screen, we covered how and when to take notes, and that memory palace technique, which helps you memorize information. If you liked uh, these, all this information that we've been covering, uh, please tell your friends about us. We're still a relatively small organization. Uh, we've grown a lot. We've done these classes now in over 40 cities. We've got a bunch of instructors now. Uh, we're growing mostly through word of mouth, so thank you for attending. I've got my contact information here because if you want to organize a course on campus, maybe with your uh, student group or your department or at your workplace, uh, we do a lot of corporate training. We do a lot of workshops on college campuses across the United States. Actually, we're starting to do them now internationally, so feel free to invite us onto your campus if you want to. I've got my contact information there for that. And the follow-up course to this webinar, if you want to continue making improvements, is at irisreading.com. Slash mastery. By the way, that uh, $50 price is a, a limited time uh, offer. Um, we're probably going to be pulling that offer off uh, the website very soon, so feel free to take advantage of it. Thank you guys so much for attending. Again, if you like this, please tell your friends about us. If you didn't like it, please tell your enemies about us. Thank you so much for attending, and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.